hope is something you believe in because if you believe that tomorrow can be a better day for you you don't care about what is going to happen today so your hope is about you and how you believe it that will be the very great hope my name is Imano Fosiyabua I say hope Welcome to I Share Hope, the podcast where world leaders share their real stories of hope and how you can use actionable hope to start changing your life today. And now, here's your host, Chris Williams. Emmanuel, are you there? Yes, can you hear me? I can hear you and I can see you. Okay, that's good. Can you hear me that's okay? That's good. I can hear you. Okay, great. So... Uh, flip your phone sideways. I can get a better view of you. Can you go like this? Yeah. Well, let's see if it'll. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Can you hold that okay, or is that gonna be awkward? Um. I will try. I will try to hold it. <laughs> yeah. So, where are you right now? You're in California. I'm in California, San Diego, right now. Oh wow! What a beautiful place. Yes. And are you? Um, so let me just make sure. So our listeners and our viewers, whoever gets to watch this can can know it is may what is today may 2nd or 3rd may 2nd may 3rd may 3rd and you are from ghana yes uh ghana africa and you are about to ride from the west coast all the way to washington dc is that right right ride a yes. bike uh-huh. and, and you've already been given just let me let me just see if i can roll through this um you've already been given a couple of really cool awards. I've got here that you've been given the SB Award from the Sports Center. Obviously, we all know ESPN Sports Center gives away the SB Awards. Uh, Oprah Winfrey gave you that, uh, which is super cool to meet her, I'm sure. You've been given Nike's Casey Martin Award for Courage in Sports. A documentary yes. called Emmanuel's Gift was created about you. And your last name, so I can get this right, it's Emmanuel. Afosu, is that Afosu right? Afosu Yebua. Afosu Yebua. Yes. And your website, this is, I'm about to get there for folks who are listening. <laughs> <laughs> your website is emmanuelsdream.org. And as you're listening to this, you want to check this out. So you've, you've ridden your bike across Ghana. You've yes. raised international attention to what you're doing. And I haven't said what you're doing yet. And you're about to ride your bike from Pacific to Atlantic here in the US and you're obviously right. outside and you're doing all that with one leg am i right yes that's the best part about it so <laughs> you're one tough dude so you grew up in Ghana South Africa one leg and in that world for those of you who don't know how the the third world countries or developing countries sometimes work which is unfortunate it's really hard to make a living and it's hard to feed yourself let alone a family if you have a disability and so often kids are poisoned or or killed or left to die on the street or given to orphanages whatever it may be because right. of a disability and you're throwing all that back in everybody's face and saying no i got this and we're going to get something done is that the way it works yes i love it i love it yes it's got a lot of guts <laughs> good so how long have you been in the u.s um, I've been to U.S. since 2002, and uh, before I used to go to Ghana back and forth, back and forth, like every year, I used to, you know, it's like um, since 2002, it's, it's like I live half Ghana, I live half U.S., but since like close to five years now, then I decided to stay here. So since five years or maybe six years ago, I live in the U.S., permanently and um, I go to Ghana once in a year or maybe twice in a year but it's going to start from this year I'll be going to Ghana like maybe every four months or maybe every six months I'll be going to Ghana because of what I want to do in Ghana sure sure that makes sense I hear you there yeah that's really cool so you are how many miles are you fixing to ride your bike yeah I'm trying to ride my bicycle for Every day I'm going to ride 50 miles a day. 50, and, uh, five, five, zero, 50. Yeah, five zero. Wow. Five zero a day. Wow. And uh, I'm, it's going to take me 65 days wow. to do that. Every yes. day, nonstop. Rain or shine? What yes, happens if, every day. I will ride my bicycle. So or do you have one of those, um, those road crews? Like sometimes I see people riding, they have like a support car or van next to them. Do you have 
people with extra tires and food and water? How do you do it? Yes, I'm going to have, that's, that's how I'm raising money right now to ride my bicycle. Because the money I'm going to raise is going to support for all those things. It's going to buy me gas. It's going to buy me spare tire. It's going to buy me food. Where I'm going to stay and the people, the cameraman and all those people, I'm going to feed them. I'm going to pay all those people. So the money I'm raising is going to cost for that cost. But I budget for $50,000 wow. to ride from California to Washington, D.C. Wow. But I believe when I get a sponsorship for $50,000, I'm going to raise $2 million from the day I will finish my 65 days. I want to raise $2 million to build a school for disabled people in Ghana. Wow. Bo Post Academy. So yeah. Tell me the name of the academy again. Yeah, it's going to be EFSA. EFSA, EFSA Academy. EFSA yeah. Academy. And it's for, yes. it's for disabled kids. Yes, it's for disabled kids. Yes. You realize that in like a decade, you're going to be just a national hero. You got that, right? <laughs> I mean, you really are. Thank you. <laughs> you Thank really you. are. That's so cool. Thank you. I love meeting people on this side of, of becoming super famous because what you're doing is not just courageous on your own but it's courageous for thousands of others. And that's awesome. Hmm. All right, you still there? Yeah, and you know, what I'm doing right now, I believe, yes, I still there. I believe what I'm doing right now, I'm considered a superhero. Because I believe in me now, so many of you are doing good business that I'm doing right now. But you know, it's only one person started and many people follow. So I believe it's very good for me to start it and many people follow in the near future. Right now, when you go to my country, I started with one leg riding a bicycle in my country for the first time. And something is never done or never happened in my country before. But right now, when you go to my country, Ghana, you can see some disabled cyclists in Olympics. You can see some people in um, doing um, sports. Right now, I'm a soccer player. I play soccer for U.S. National Putin Soccer Team. I started this in Ghana before coming to U.S. And right now, September 22nd, I'm launching a huge sports academy in Ghana for disabled people. I want my people to do something. Well, we lost this guy for a second. He'll come back in a minute. Hey, man. Hello, Chris. Are you there? Yep, I got you back now. It's sketchy, okay. a little bit sketchy there, but it's all right. We'll figure it out. Okay. So, so what you're doing, I, you are making this this huge stamp because you know that your people in Ghana, who have a great history, can have an even better history, and you're Absolutely, you're sure. bringing that to the forefront. Man, yes, that's so cool. All right. Well, you are one of our thousand people from around the globe that we're asking our questions about hope. Can you give us some answers? Yes. All right. You know, hope is something you believe in. Because if you believe that, tomorrow can be a better day for you. You don't care about what is going to happen today. So your hope is about you and how you believe it. That should be the very great hope. I remember many years ago, my mom said, Emmanuel, don't give up. When you keep on pounding, you will be a great person in the near future. Because I used to, I tried to used to play soccer with my friends in Ghana, and they said, "No, you can't play soccer with us. You have only one leg." And it, it's never, I never give up. It's never pulled me back. I keep on pounding it. And now look at me, I play for U.S. National and Putin Soccer Team here in America. So it's dream is about you. Hope is about you. How you believe it. How you think it's going to turn out. Yes. Hmm. Love it. Couldn't agree more. Question one for you, Mr. Emmanuel. Question one is what is your definition about hope? What's your definition of hope or your favorite quote about hope? I can say never give up. Never, never give up. Because if we didn't give up, you will see the great future in the near future. Because in people in this world, at times, we came like the way Jesus Christ came. So we...
at times the flesh is weak, but we have to believe our soul that maybe if the flesh is weak, we still have. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, people I, are still people are calling me on my phone. That's why. I'm, that's what's going on. Okay, that yeah. that makes sense. I'm turning my video off just to save a little bit of bandwidth. <laughs> Um, okay, that's you keep fine. you keep your video on. We're good. Okay. <laughs> so, it, you were saying that. Uh, go back a little bit to what you were saying. You mentioned Jesus Christ, okay. and then yes, I said uh, at times Jesus Christ wants us to compare ourselves to Him, because He never give up upon all the things people do to Him. He wants to tell people that if you never give up, the future is very great. So that's why we have to do this. At times, the flesh, the flesh is very weak, but always we don't have to depend too much on our flesh because if you don't have two legs, it doesn't mean that's the end of it in your life. You can still do something. If you have a head, which means, or when you lose your head, which means you lose the great thing in your life. But if you have a head, which means you can think about tomorrow. You can do something tomorrow for the others. You know, this world, it doesn't need for you to have two arms before you can do great things in your life. It doesn't need you to have two legs before you can do great things in your life. For instance, if you have a head, then you can do something great. Hmm. Because we have so many people in this world, they are blind, but they are doing so many wonderful things. People cannot talk, but they do so many things. People cannot hear, but they can do so many things. But in my life, I never see a person who doesn't have a head before. Hmm. So if you have a head, you have everything in this world. You can think about tomorrow. Hmm. You can sleep and think about tomorrow. At times people said, okay, Emmanuel, I'm telling you this. If you like, don't give me an answer right now. Go and sleep and think about tomorrow and give me the answer. So when you sleep and you dream, you have better plans or you know what you're going to do the next so i believe that if you have a head you have everything in this world love it that's a great way to say it use your head and if you got one you sure should be yes. using it hmm. absolutely sure who has shared hope with you in your life has there been somebody back there who's really given you a lot of hope uh, one person before someone who is giving me the hope in my life and that hope is helping me a lot up to date is my mom hmm. My mom, she's a, some, a, a person, someone, she doesn't have money. Even my mom, she never buy a TV in her entire life before. But my mom, she was very good Christian. The time my mom passed away, it's Pentecostal church in my country. They bury my mom because my mom, uh, her involvement and her activities and everything in, in church was so perfect. She was the first person who go to church. I remember... The time I was baby, if I didn't go to church one Sunday, my mom, she would never feed me. So <laughs> my mom gave me encouragement, hope, everything I need. Any tools I can need to fix my life or to make my life better for me, my mom gave me. Mm. Right now, speaking to you, I'm not rich. I'm not in the middle class. But any little money I get, I give it to the people. If I have like $1,000 today, the money I will spend in it or to buy a food, I don't buy too much clothes. I'm not a fancy guy. Uh, but if I have $1,000 today, maybe the money and me and my family will spend, it will be, let's say, 100 to $200. All the $800 will go to charity, helping people in Africa, paying people school fees, buying crutches, buying so many things for the other addicts. So I believe that my mom gave me any kind of a tool to fix my life. And right now, someone who is supporting me or is acting like the way my mom acts is my wife. And uh, she knows that the work I'm doing, because, you know, if God didn't give it to you, you can never do it. If God said, go to the world and be as a pilot, you can't go to be as a doctor. You have to be a pilot. That's what God gave it to you. So right now, I know what I'm doing right now is God gives to me. It's a gift from God. That's why my movie, I name it Emmanuel's Gift. I believe that I don't have anything in this world, but I have a gift. 
God sent me to this world for the gift. So I can use my gift to change so many people's lives in this world. That's why I'm still doing what I'm doing. And it doesn't make you, you don't have to be a rich before you can do good things. Your belief that you have a special gift to give to the world is so powerful, so powerful. Because we all have something in our lives that we might think is not a great gift. And others might say, how in the world did you do that? But it can be a great gift. So take us back. Question three, what's, what's gone on in your life where you've had to say, you know, I've had to really use hope to get through this hard time? Yes, I can say um, right now, like how I'm telling you, I'm not a rich person. At times I struggle to make something done for me and my family. But like how I said, I know, you know, especially we used to say this, that uh, in this world, a teacher can teach someone to become as a doctor, a pilot, to earn more salary than the teacher. But the teacher can be in that classroom for almost like 50 years or almost like 30 years, teaching people to become a better person or better people in the world. But the teacher still in classroom every day. And we used to say, all the teachers are reward in heaven because what they are doing, they are giving people hope in their life to become a somebody in their life, but they still in the same room. So the same thing I believe myself that I'm not thinking about what I'm going to get today. I'm praying to God that if there's heaven, then one day I wanted to be in heaven. I wanted to use my life. I wanted to use my gift. I wanted to use everything I have to make changes in this world. You know, at times I think about African leaders. Every time I think about them, I can say they are more selfish because a country like a Ghana, Ghana doesn't supposed to go to any country to beg for money or to go to ask for loan. Ghana have everything. When we see a king coming from Ghana, from the person legs up to his arms or whatever, anything the person, the king is willing is a good. Why we can't sell that good to make changes in people's life, but we are, using, we, are, we are using this for fun, for function, and people are dying for hungry, and people, you know, it's very sad. This word, one of my motto, is, it, it is difficult to understand, because at times you can't understand the word. You know, why money is just a colored paper? We can print like a, any amount of money we want today, but we are not printing the money. The few money in the system, and so many people are fighting for that money to make so many corruption, to make so many crime, to make so many disturbances to the people. Because if you have money and I have money, I won't come to your house and kill you tomorrow. So what the world is doing, why are we supposed, we are putting all our trust in money so money is killing the world so we don't have to trust money because money is good but the love of the money that's the evil but right now people don't want to do the god work people wanted to be rich people wanted to be pastors and doctors to buy huge cars I, i've never seen any bible or anywhere i've seen god god was using range over or maybe hammer or maybe Mercedes or something like that. But these days, everything is fighting, fighting, fighting. That's when it's killing us. Hmm. Wow. It's a lot to say. That really is. I think you're, I think you're onto something there. I really do. It's sad, but I think you are. And I'm glad you are. Question four. What are you doing on a daily basis to bring hope to other people? How are you sharing hope? Yeah, every day day basis what I do I compare myself to so many leaders in this world when we choose Martin Luther King as example Martin Luther King he was not a president but after Martin Luther King died every year we celebrate his birthday in this country even so many people in this world they remember Martin Luther King that maybe some of the presidents they become as a president in this country when you ask a child in America, who is Martin Luther King? They can, that child can able to tell you about who is Martin Luther King is. But when you ask somebody about, can you tell me 
33rd president in America, maybe the president doesn't know the name. So it's about the legacy we are going to leave in this world that's going to be the hope. So we have to make our hope or daily basis change to know that, you know, a hero is someone who fights until the day you die. That makes you hero. So today, when you do something to spoil your name, you are not hero. Everything you've done in the past is gone. So every day, you have to stick into what you are trying to achieve. When you die tomorrow, what people are going to say about you? When you die today, what people are going to say about you? But you can use like 20 years to build your name. You can use one day to spoil your name, to spoil all the 10 years. So it's very, very, very important to, to prevent your name. It's very because our body, it doesn't need in this world. Everything we have, it doesn't need in this world. But our name is going to be there forever. So every day we have to protect our name. We have to, know, we have to make people to know that our name is very, very, very important. Everyone's signature in the world is a name. So every day what I do is I try to uh, make my name be like where it is. So that people mention my name every day, they will see that what was happening previous years ago is still the same as Emmanuel's gift. Is it the same Emmanuel? That's what every day I do. That's really good advice. If you're listening or watching this, if you didn't catch all that, this is really good advice. Protecting your name. Your name is so important. So being who you know you should be to be to be all you can be for your potential for who you're made to be, you've got to protect that name. You've got to protect who you are, who people see you as. Not being fake, not creating some fake image, but being yourself and being true to that and not making quick little decisions that might ruin your reputation or your name long term. That's a great way to bring hope, more hope to your own life and to share and to be able to share hope with other people because you haven't ruined your, your platform, your reputation. And Emmanuel is comparing himself to leaders on a daily basis so he can say, hey, this is who I want to be like. I got to step up to the plate. Uh, man, that's good stuff because you're dealing with not just um, what you're doing, riding a bike or having your organization, but you're dealing with who you are at your core, who's, who you are in your heart. That's a big, big deal. Mm. Yeah. Okay, question five, Emmanuel. What are the the simple steps that I can do right now when I when I get off this phone call with you, what are the simple steps that I can do that say I'm going to grow as a person of hope or I'm going to share hope? What do I do next? Like the next five minutes, what should I start doing? Yes, the next five minutes, you know, let me tell you one thing before you get what I'm going to say. Airplane is very huge, but before airplane can board all the passengers in the air airport, before the airplane can fly, there's a small car, like a golf car. That one pushes the airplane back before the airplane can fly. Without that car, airplane cannot fly. Without that small golf car, airplane cannot fly because there's no reverse in airplane. So everyone in this world needs help. When you are here today, say to yourself, this is what I wanted to do. I've never been to a school before. I've never done this before, but I wanted to do it. Let me tell you today, everything you wanted to do in this world, it, it's supposed to take you 24 months. 24 months, if you can't, uh, if you can't reach that goal, or if you, if you couldn't do it, then I can say uh, there's something wrong somewhere. Because if you get help, in your life and you wanted to do that thing and you couldn't make it then you can i don't count yourself as a one of the heroes but if you get help in your life want to do something and 24 months and you couldn't do it for two years you couldn't do that thing then don't consider yourself that your hero because let me give you two examples if you want to go to university you can use two years to go to university. That's one. If you, wanted to get, if you wanted to have a baby, you can use nine months or ten months to have a baby. If you wanted to um, build a house, 
you can use two years to build a house. If you wanted to do, if you wanted to be a pilot today, you can use two years, 24 months, to become as a pilot. If you everything you wanted to do in this month, this year, this world, it's supposed to take you 24 months to do it. So when you get help to do something, and within 24 months you have help, you have a car to go to work and come back, or to go to school, you have somewhere to to buy, to pay your school fees, to provide you everything you need, and you can't reach your goal, or you don't, if you didn't come as a hero for what you wanted to do in two years, Christmas counts out yourself from heroes because you can't do it anymore. Right now I'm here, I wanted to build a school with sports academy, a very huge one, a very nice one, very professional in Ghana. I don't have the money to build it. When I get the money today, within 24 months, I will build that facility in Ghana, in Jesus' name. I will build it. So that's how we need. If you, if you are a hero, if you have, I know that everyone in this world is a dreamer. Everyone is a hero. But you need someone to push you, like airplane in airport. So the pushing, if you get help, that's your push. Then you can do it. So all mm -hmm. these things I say, I say to you, then choose whatever you wanted to choose or whatever you wanted to do after you get up from here. Mm. That's good. I love that analogy. You're right. The biggest, best airplanes out there, they don't go backwards. Never. <laughs> yeah, those, those dumb little carts that push them away from the airport yes. that look kind of stupid. But that whole thing is what helps get the airplane started, and we have to have yes. that little nudge that little bit of help from somebody else. Yes. So decide what we want to do and yes. get a little bit of help. Mm. Yes. Let Man, me you, tell you one thing. Yeah. Um, the time President Obama, he wanted to become as a president in America. He do fundraising. People donate $1, $2, $10, and $10,000 and whatever money for him before he can do his good campaign. To become as a president mm -hmm. so who doesn't need help in this world everyone needs help hmm. so yeah another good analogy help. another everyone good analogy need help. everyone needs help in this world that's why i'm doing this on my website i'm doing this on gofundme i want people to donate for my cause for people to trust me to have all their belief in me that i can do it if they help me always i said help me when you help me we can do it. I cannot say I can do it. Your help and my help can make something done. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, Emmanuel. Let me make sure that I've got where people can find you. Emmanuel's Dream is your website, and that's E M M A N U E L S D R E A M dot org. Emmanuel's Dream dot org. If you Google it, you'll find it. I just did. It's super easy to find. Yes. And then you have a GoFundMe page at GoFundMe.com. That's G-O-F-U-N-D-M-E.com. And you can right. search for Emmanuel there. Um, it's People can find me too on Facebook as well. Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, yes. all those places? Everywhere, yes. All of it under Emmanuel's Dream? Um, some of them is Emmanuel's Dream. Some of them is in, uh, uh, my name, my full name. I'm going to spell yeah. this full name because it's never going to be figured out if we just say it. Because unless you're from your country, it's going to be hard to really catch. So Emmanuel, yeah. <laughs> it's Emmanuel, it's E-M-M-A-N-U-E-L. -E Middle name is O-F-O-S-U. Last name is Y-E-B-O-A-H. Did I spell that right? Yes. Amazing. Yes. <laughs> Sir, okay, so have you have you got on your bike yet? When do you start riding your bike? I supposed to start my bicycle in May this um this month, but like how I'm telling you, I didn't get a sponsorship I have to get to do the ride. So right now I postponed my ride and it's still coming on. If I get some people or companies to sponsor my bike ride, I will start my bike ride tomorrow. If nice. I get a sponsorship today, I will start tomorrow. There's no time wasting. Um, my time is ready to do anything I can do tomorrow. Love it. I love it. I wish you all the best. Thank all you the so best. Much. I really do.
Um, Thank you so much. And the whole project is just really fun and fascinating. I can't wait to follow you and watch you. I am in Memphis, Tennessee. Are you driving through Memphis, Tennessee? Are you going to come through Tennessee? Yeah, I think so. I will check my route again, but I think some. Uh, I will check with my team. I okay. think we are passing through somewhere Tennessee and Texas or those areas. If you come through yeah. Tennessee or somewhere near me, be sure and reach out, email or something. Sure. So yes. let me give you a little more info here for anybody listening or watching. Everybody with me, it's uh, isharehope.com is our website. If you go to the interviews tab, you will find Emmanuel there at isharehope.com. We're going to post pictures, videos, links to his website, his social media feed, all the stuff about Emmanuel will be right there in case you can't write all this stuff down that we're talking about now. So isharehope.com. Also on our social media, which is Chris Williams HQ. Any social media platform, Chris Williams HQ is how you can find us, and we'll be pushing out info about Emmanuel as well, this interview, and just following him along in his little journey. So, Emmanuel, quite okay. amazing. Thank you. And one last thing we ask you to do, say your name and I share hope. So, your name and I share hope. My name is Emmanuel Fosi I share hope. Yes, you do. I'm <laughs> very impressed, sir. Good. Well, man, have a great, great afternoon. Thank you very much for the phone call so today. Much. It's Thank great talking so to you. All right. I want to tell everyone that I'm not a pope, but I give hope. <laughs> You're not the pope, but you give hope. But I give hope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Have a Thank great you one. So much. Bye bye. You've just listened to I Share Hope. If you're ready to make a change, head to our website at ishareHope.com and claim your free copy of the top 10 actions of hope from world leaders to use hope in your own life. Thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you next time.